Hello everybody and a very warm welcome back to Tony Northeastern and I hope you're all keeping safe and well and most of all you're enjoying your model railways but if you haven't got a railway then you're just here to find out what I'm going to be up to this week right um, I've just come off the PC where I was on a live stream that's with um, Hot Dog Andy um, yeah so I popped in and had a few chat with some of the lads, some for some of the fellow YouTubers. Now, if you've never heard of Hot Dog um, Andy, then you can always pop across to his channel and have a look. See, uh, yeah, very nice chap, and um, yeah, it was good to see you again, Andy, especially after Gets. So there you go. Pop along to Hot Dog Andy. Right, so. What we're going to continue with is the signals. So we've got a little signal to put here, which is a three aspect signal. We should cover these three lines here. But before we do that, we've got a little tiny job I need to do over at Jower Road um, because a certain signal box is missing, well, let's just say one of its important details. So here we are, we're back at the bench, and this is the little detail I'm talking about. The signal box is missing its sign. Now, a few weeks ago, well, seems like yesterday now, it gets, I met up with Steve Smith. Now, Steve Smith um, is a fellow YouTuber. He has a channel called TimeDoc5AB, and... Um, he 3D printed these off for me, which is very kind of him. And, um, yeah, because it's very hard to get writing on that small. Um, that only measures roughly about three millimeters. Um, so, yeah, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to paint this up and put it on the signal box. And that will then finish Chara Road. Before we get stuck into the um, building of the signals, I thought I'd show you this photograph. Um, this is coming in from the north end of South Shields. It's how I built the the oval roof on using this framework, um, as you've as you've seen in previous videos. But if you look at the signal here to the left, it has two supporting stanchions on the signal which is very very unusual so I want to do that um, it won't have the lattice work on it but uh, the rest of it I'll probably do um, yeah so that's the plan there for that so using the kits that I've got we, we should be able to create something like that um, if we look closer into the photograph here, there's another signal arm coming out across there, which is attached to the wall. You can see the ladder. Just make out the ladder there coming down the side. And uh, that's for this road here coming out. Um, so it could be another project for another time there. There is better, better photographs of that one. But this is the only photograph I've found with this type of signal. Now, 
The signal box is further back towards the camera. It's a long, long way from the station. Um, but I've got it uh, a little bit closer due to space rest restrictions. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to concentrate on making that signal there. So these are the kits I'm going to be using to make that signal. Um, so we have the Pratt Truss uh, Gantry and the LMS Round Post signals. Now the reason why I've chose these signals is because they look similar to the ones in the photograph. They don't look like the LNR signals with the finials on the top. So, as for the trusses, I'm just going to pinch some of the parts of this kit and some of the parts of this kit and possibly some of the parts of this kit to make that unique signal. <laughs> so it's going to be a bit of a mixed bag. Anyway, the one thing you've got to take into considering when you're mounting the signals on platforms is the height of the platform. So you've got to take the height of the platform off your, your main supports. So that's what I've done here. I've made up my two supports. Uh, this is 4.8 um, green styrene box section. And that's going to take the place of these two um, supports here. Um, yeah, but I'll be keeping the bases. Um, and I'll be picking my way through this kit and picking out the bits that I want to use and the pick bits that I don't necessarily need. So, let's get cracking. Right, so in order to fit the new um, support columns, I've had to cut away a little bit of these um, tabs about a millimeter either side for the column to fit onto um, which is no hardship just cut through there and just take them off a little bit that side and a little bit on this side and the column then fits over the tabs and keeps that in place and we just need to fit these two little truss brackets to the column and then we can glue that on in place just make sure your little brackets are in the center of your column and flush with the bottom just a little bit of glue around there. There we go. Over the tabs. Just got to hold that square for a second or two. Right, it should end up like this one. Before the glue goes off, we just have to check to make sure that they're square. Yep. So now the fun begins. Um, what I've had to do here is put in a, another hole on this walkway. Um, because in the photograph you got three signals uh, quite close together it would look silly to have a gap and then have the signal here it wouldn't look look right so what I've done is I've popped another hole in there uh, I used a 0 0.8 to start with and then the 3 mil afterwards to open it up because all the other holes are 3 mil um, another thing I have to do is I'm going to have to trim the end of this uh, walkway off uh, as well so whatever spacing we've got here from the edge to the centre of the hole I'm going to have to make here. But yeah, I'm finding this kit a lot easier to work with. Um, Alright, you've still got lots of cleaning up to do, with, which is what you get normally with kits. So 
So what I'm going to concentrate on next is these bracketries here that support the walkway. Um, we have these in the kit, so I'm going to utilise these and make that section up. Right, so I've placed the columns on the platforms just to give me an idea of heights and uh, where everything needs to be. Um, yes, it's got to come over a little bit and uh, not by much, probably about 10 millimeters or so, which we can get that on the far side. I've just got to remove some of the grass and what have you and trim the base down. I think that's quite easy to do. We can do that. Now, another thing I've just seen, um, we can't have this gantry exactly like the one in South Shields. What I mean by the way um, that the signal operates uh, because of the track plan. Because if we look down, um, the track plan is totally different. Yet again, because of lack of space, the turnout should be here going across away, across here, and then another turnout across here. But uh, I've done it re reverse images, as it were. So I could have a run-around loop for when the train comes in and have a run-around loop back that way. Um, so we're going to have to change how we configure this signal. I still have the three um, aspects in there, but they're going to have to operate the three lines in here, if that makes sense. So if you're on the far side, it'll be the first, the second and third. Yep, that would work. Right, so I've glued some brackets to the columns. Um, these came with the kits. And with this one, I've cut them in half and made it, made it to look like the photograph. So when these go together, they'll go together like that and form the arch, like you see in the steelwork in the photograph. So that's that part. That's the easy part. Now the hard part is I am now trimming some of these supports off of this walkway. So I'm cutting them back about a millimetre and a half just so I can put in my own support along that edge because in the photograph you see the support right along there you don't see these little individual supports so I'm just trimming these back now. So this might take a while because it's a very delicate job. Right, so that's those two strips stuck down. And the next thing I want to do is just glue these columns in place. flush with the support on the inside there and uh, hopefully that should look okay and then this one will butt right up against it so we can form that arch in there And there we go. Just zoom out a bit. That's what it's going to look like. Right, so we're just having a little trial fit here with this um, um, two supports and the upper frame just to see how it looks. 
and yep I think that will look good in that position so just above the lamppost so that shouldn't affect the driver's view as they're coming into the station from the um, sidings so yeah so as we've got four holes in the um, flooring I might put four signals there so this one here this hole here would control this little siding and then we got the three other holes for the other three lines so I could potentially have four um, signals so that's what the signals will be um, in charge of is the two sidings and the spur line going into this siding here although this lower half looks finished but if we zoom in closer on the base plate there you can see a slot now that slot there is for four rods to run up the inside of this column in theory will operate the signals that are going to go on top so I shall do that now and start adding these little details onto these columns before I start on the signals right so with the kit you get some brass rods and um, what I've done is I've stuck four of them together to make the rodding which is going to run up the um, inside of the column like I've just shown you uh, it's stuck to some 1mm by 0.25 thick um, styrene strips and uh, that is going to form the bracketry for the um, rods and it'll, we'll stick it to the side of the column uh, just inside there where the groove is so it looked like there's some rods going up to the signals once the signals are fitted. Right, so I've painted the four operating rods, uh, painted them silver and with the three brackets. Obviously I've got to trim these down. These are just for holding the um, rods while I was painting them. Uh, this strip is just uh, 0.25 by 1mm wide. So that, once it's dry, will go in the inside of this in here, just to add that little bit of detail. So it looks like the rods are running up the side of the column to operate the signals. Right, so now we can move on to the signals themselves. Um, I've added a ladder and the ladder support. So. What I'm doing with these is I've cut them down by 6mm and I've also drilled a 0.8 hole there for the rodding. You notice I've drilled it opposite to this bracket at the top here. Here. So you've got the bracket here above the lamp which holds the wire and if we turn this 90 degrees you'll see the other hole which is going to operate it via the balance weight arm here if I just put the drill bit through you can see it's 90 degrees opposite to that so when the lever arm goes in we can then up and down and operate the um, signal. You'll see as we go along. So I've done one post ready, so I'll have to do the others. There's four posts going. Right, the next thing I'm doing is fitting these little brackets which are going to support the balance arms. So what I've done is where I've drilled a hole through already, I've put a bit of wire through, feed the supporting bracket over the wire and get the hole to line up 
Like there she goes, she's on. Right, like so. What I'll do is I'll put a little bit of a flat on there because you want something for the glue to grip. I'll just use a file, just take that backwards and forwards a few times just to create a little flat edge on there. Put in a little bit of glue and then spin the bracket around, I'll get you into focus and then sit that little bracket onto the glue and then that's it, leave that to dry. And that brings the two holes smack in line ready to, to uh, when we fit the balance levers for operating the signals. Right, so I've turned it around put it in the right way where it should be. So what I'm doing now is just giving this ex excess cap, uh, wire just a tiny little kink and then now I can trim it back. So that now will lock that in place. And that's the way it should be, opposite the lamp. So we've got the lamp this side, you can see it's the round lamp there and the lever is on the back side of it. So that's already operational. Right, I thought we'd come over to the Jarrow Road signal box and glue on the name sign um, that we painted earlier. And there it is, it's on the apex of the signal box. There's no room underneath the window because of the bracketry that supports the walkway so I thought I'd stick it on the apex and it looks a treat thanks again Steve, very much appreciate it Looks brilliant, doesn't it? Right, so there it is. The signal gantry is now on the platform, and that's where it's gonna go. Um, still a few of the little bits and pieces I want to do to it. The paint is still a little bit dry, but uh, while it's sitting here, I just wanna show you this. Now this planking is gonna go across the platform there. It's similar to the planking that we've got here in front of the signal box. And that's for the, the rodding that will control the points. So what I'm going to do is have some sort of planking across there and this is it. All it is is just a piece of paper. I've scribed it with a pen and I've covered it in super glue. And that's what forms um, plastic if you like. So what I'll do now is I'll just mark that with a pencil under there where the uh, signal base plate is and then glue a piece from there to the edge of the capping stones and it'll look like um, you could lift the boards to get to the um, signal rods if you like that operates the signal. And if you go around the other side, you can actually see the rods coming up the um, support there because they're glued on now. See that? So that's what I want to do next. I'm going to measure this, cut this, glue a piece. Um, on there and then just paint it brown, dirty it up so it looks like planking. Right so that's the planking glued down and painted so I'm just going to add a little bit of a weathering powder just to take the sheen off the paint and add a little bit of grime to this area. Um, I know it's already been grimed up once when I did the platform originally but platforms are never never squeaky clean and then just blend it in 
Right, so um, that's that little job done. Um, the signal itself is a little bit of a mix match. But um, I don't know if you noticed, but I've used the LNER signal arms on these LMS signal posts, as it were. So, yeah. And, uh, and it kind of works because I like the LNR single signal arms because of the shape. You've got these nice recesses in the arm, it gives it a little bit of a character look. So, yeah. So I'm quite happy with that. So we got the four four arms now. So I think it was well worth drilling that extra hole because um, we've now got a signal arm here which operates this um, spur line where the locomotive is. Um, then we got the down line which goes through this side, and we've got this signal here which operates the middle line, and then we got this signal here which operates the the up line so yeah so that kind of works out quite well by adding that extra hole it was by pure luck that uh, it was going to come in handy so there you go right so I think that is all for me this week um, the signaling is done and if we go at this angle you can see the overall look. So yeah, I'm quite happy with this week's work as it were. And you can see by the grime on the on the plank in there. And there we got Fred and Ted looking over my handiwork. They're probably wondering, bloody hell, it took two to three years to get the signals put in. <laughs> Right, so I think that's all from me this week. Um, mind you, in seeing that, I said that last week and then we had another video. But uh, yeah, I'd like to do one more test video. Um, but this time on the main line. And uh, well, because I've got a little idea, well, an idea that uh, you guys have given me. So we might have an extra bonus video this weekend if I get time. Uh, I know in a couple of weeks time I'm off to Newcastle to a model railway show they have an in Jesmond so it'd be good to, to meet up with some of you guys again um, at there at that um, exhibition so yeah anyway that's enough of me waffling on that's all from me now take care everybody and we'll see you next time bye for now Bye.